Greetings in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. I am Pastor Angel Ferguson and I thank you so very much for joining us today. Truly, this is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. It is our honor and our pleasure to come and spend some time with you in the Word of God. And what we're going to share with you today is entitled God's Provisions. This is from a Bible study that we did over at Faith Outreach Deliverance Church, Bridgeton, New Jersey on this past Wednesday. Today, God's provisions were provided well in advance. When it comes to sin, God has already provided forgiveness. When it comes to death, something that we will all face at one time or another, He has already provided eternal and resurrection life. And when it comes to sickness and needing healing of any kind in the body, He has already provided that. Any disease, he has already provided healing for us. And so take out your pens and paper so that you can take notes, relish in the word, apply it to your lives. And let us not forget the benefits of God, for there are many. He loves us and he provided well in advance. We'd love to hear from you. Please feel free to visit us on our website for the College of Ministry and Mentoring at www.angelfergusonsministries.simplesite.com. Via the website, you have the opportunity to check out the courses that we offer, the length of time. Right now, we are doing all virtual classes. And let us not forget, starting this Saturday, from 10 a.m. to 12 o'clock noon, we will begin Leadership Part 2, Kingdom Leaders Learning to Lead. For more details on how you can register for Kingdom Leaders Learning to Lead, feel free to email us today. Our email address for The Balance of Life is thebalanceoflife1 at yahoo.com. Stay encouraged, encouraging others along the way. We love you. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, truly. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. And tonight we are going to have our Wednesday night Bible study. And I'm going to fill in for Apostle Naaman Wilson Jr. tonight. Uh, we're going to, so that we'll get our subject out there, take a look at God's provisions. We will start with a word of prayer, read our scriptures for every day, followed by the seven works of grace, your bill of rights in Christ. Father, in the name of Jesus, we come before you right now with a humble heart and spirit, and we ask you that you give us a heart and a mind and a desire to decrease, that you may increase. We thank you in advance for the word that you will allow us to share tonight. We thank you in advance, Father God, for the lives that will be changed in the hearts, Lord God, that will be converted and renewed back unto you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. amen. I give honor to Christ, whom is my life, and to the overseer of Faith Outreach Deliverance Incorporated, Chief Apostle Rona D. Allen Sr., Pastor Dr. Lillian C. Allen, our youth pastor, Dr. Gibbons, our deacon and our deaconesses, and everybody in their respective places. Our scriptures for every day, wisdom and knowledge belongs to you. Colossians 1, 9 through 10. For this cause we also, since the day we heard it, do not cease to pray for you and to desire that he might be filled with the knowledge of his will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding, that he might walk worthy of the Lord unto all pleasing, being fruitful in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of God. Ephesians, the first chapter, verse 17 through verse 18, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you the, the spirit of wisdom and revelation and the knowledge of him, the eyes of your understanding being enlightened, 
that you may know what is the hope of his calling and what the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints. Isaiah 11, 2. And the fear of the Lord shall rest upon him, the fear of wisdom and understanding, the fear of counsel and might, the fear of knowledge, and the fear of the Lord. Be filled with God's fullness. Ephesians 3, 17 through 19. That Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith, that ye, being rooted and grounded in love, may be able to comprehend with all saints what is the breadth and length and depth and height, and to know the love of Christ, which passes knowledge, that ye might be filled with all the fullness of God. Colossians, second chapter, verse 8 through verse 10. Beware lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit, after the tradition of men, after the rudiments of the world, and not after Christ. For in him dwell all the fullness of the Godhead body, and you are complete in him, which is the head of all principality and power. Acts 1 8. But ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost is come up upon you, and ye shall be witness to both Jerusalem and Jerusalem. Jerusalem, Jerusalem, Judea, and in Samaritan, and other most parts of the earth. Expect a move of God suddenly, Romans 8 and 11. But if the Spirit of Him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, He who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal, natural, earthly bodies through His Spirit who dwells in you. The seven works of grace, your bill of rights in Christ. Repentance is atonement and sorrow. Conversion, transformed, changed. Justification, validation, legalization. Sanctification, consecration, purification. Baptism of the Holy Spirit, the beginning. Redemption, liberation, deliverance, freedom. Perfection, excellence, and faultlessness. Amen? All right, you may be seated in the presence of the Lord. As I mentioned, I am filling in tonight for Apostle Wilson. And as the Lord will, he will return next Wednesday to continue on his teaching of judgment and atonement. And tonight I'm going to stay pretty much in the same area I want to talk about God's redemptive provision for us. And so we're going to take a look at three areas where God has already provided for us. You know, whenever something is going on, he provides the antidote in advance. Yes. So we're going to look at what he has already provided when there is sin. When there is sin, he has provided forgiveness. And when there is death, he provides eternal and resurrection life. And when there is sickness and illness in the body, he provides healing. So those are three areas that we're going to take a look at tonight. God's redemptive provision. So we're going to visit several areas of scripture. And I'm going to go ahead and give you some scripture texts now so that you can have them in advance. We're going to take a look at John, the fifth chapter, and the fifth verse, as well as the 14th verse. <coughs> We're going to take a look at Psalms 103, first through the fifth verse. Luke, the fourth chapter, 18th verse as well as Luke 5th chapter 17 through the 26th verse. We're also going to take a look at James, the 5th chapter 14th through the 15th verse. And finally, Matthew's, 
the fourth chapter, 23rd through the 24th verse. I know that that's quite a bit of scripture text, but each one of these scriptures demonstrate God's provision. The text says the problem of sickness and disease is oftentimes intertwined with the problem of sin and death being, for example, the consequences of the fall. You know, when we talk about the fall, we talk about in the beginning with Adam and Eve and their fall from grace and fellowship with God because of disobedience. And so there is this parallel that we look at when it comes to medical science. And medical science views the causes of sickness and disease in psychological or psychromatic terms, but we're going to look at it on the spiritual side and look at the underlining causes, or shall we say the basic problem. Now, I will say this, that um, not all sickness is coming from an attack from the enemy. There are times in our lives that we go through things simply so that a miracle can take place. Miraculous, divine healing can take place in our lives so that God may get all of the glory, so that it is used as a testimony. Uh, it is used as an effective witness so when you uh, have something going on in your body and, you know, the doctor has dictated this and, and they have scheduled follow-up and sometimes surgery. But when you go back home and now you know what to pray for and you go in your secret closet and you, you put your faith totally and woefully in God and his divine healing power and you say, let your will be done. There were some instances that when you go back for the follow-up, when you get there to do the pre-op for the surgery, the doctors cannot find what they saw at the beginning. And that is divine, miraculous healing. And he does that as a witness for those who are dealing with the circumstances. And what they will do, listen, just because they have on a white coat, and they have an MD behind that name does not mean that they don't have faith or, or they're dealing with faith and God wants to prove something to them. But tonight we want to take a look at God's provision because he has provided in advance healing and forgiveness. And if he does not heal on this side, guess what? When you put your trust in him and you have accepted his son as your Lord and Savior, and he is your father which is in heaven, you will have healing on the other side because there is no sickness on that side. And so we all have to get to that place where we say, let your will be done. Sin, which has affected our spiritual and physical makeup, and it does. Let's take a look first at John, the fifth chapter, and the fifth verse. All right, we are over in John, the fifth chapter. And I'm going to start at the fifth verse. And I'm actually going to go into the 15th verse. It says, And a certain man was there, which had an infirmity thirty and eight years. When Jesus saw him lie and knew that he had been now a long time in that case, he said unto him, Will thou be made whole? 
The impotent man answered him, Sir, I have no man when the water is troubled to put me into the pool. But while I am coming, another step of down before me. Jesus said unto him, Rise, take up thy bed, and walk. And immediately the man was made whole, and took up his bed, and walked. And on the same day was a Sabbath. The Jews therefore said unto him that was cured, It is the Sabbath day, is it not lawful for thee to carry thy bed? Well, you know I've had an infirmity for 38 years, and I have sat trying to get healed. And instead of you asking what happened, what transpired in your life, you say to me, you know it's the Sabbath and you're carrying your bed, that's unlawful. Isn't that just like carmility? <laughs> Verse 11 says, he answered them, he that made me whole, the same said unto me, take up thy bed and walk. Then ask they him, what is that which said unto thee, take up thy bed and walk? Amen. And he that was healed was not who it was, for Jesus had conveyed him away, a multitude being in that place. Afterward, Jesus findeth him in the temple and said unto him, Behold, thou art made whole. Sin no more, lest the worst thing come unto thee. The man departed and told the Jews that was it was Jesus which had made him whole. Now when I get to the 14th verse, I see several things going on. He says, Afterward Jesus findeth him in the temple and said unto him, Behold, thou art made whole, sin no more. Which means that his infirmity was not from birth. It wasn't from birth. But instead of just healing him, he forgave him. Once again, we're talking about the provisions of God. And so when he heals us of our infirmities, he also deals with the sin in our lives. A lot of times when we are going through sickness and illness and we are seeking um, a healing, there are some things that we have to do in order to receive that healing. There are some instructions that he might give us. It might be uh, shedding some pounds, changing your diet. It comes with some instructions. And so, uh, listen, it would be awesome and wonderful if the weight or whatever you're going through would miraculously disappear and you didn't have to do anything. But here, Jesus gave the man some instructions. Yes, he saw him, but he told him he had to do something in order to get this healing. He told him to rise up and take up his bed. And he took it a step further, and he also uh, addressed the sin. God's provision in redemption is as extensive as the consequences of the fall. And so if you have your pen and paper... Here are three areas that God has already provided for us, and I've already said them, but I want you to, uh, if you will, write them down so that when the enemy might try to come in with the spirit of deception to tell you that um, there is no forgiveness, listen, he's already forgiven you. All you have to do is ask. So the first one is for sin, God provides forgiveness. He provided it from the very beginning. And as Apostle Wilson has been teaching about the sacrifice in the Old Testament, now under the New Testament, Christ was the ultimate and the final sacrifice. His blood shed for us. 
Here's something that we will all have to face at one time or another, and that's dealing in death. But we have an opportunity. God has provided for us an opportunity to have eternal and a resurrection life. That we will, we have an opportunity to live and reign. But we all will face it and, and, and no one could ever say, I cannot imagine uh, if anyone were to say, I understand it, I'm ready for it. Uh, that's something that we all have to get to that marker to say, I'm ready for it. I know that I'm not. But I do know that one day it is coming and it comes with our loved ones as well. And we pray, those who are, of us who are a part of the body of Christ, and we, we hold to that hope and that promise, guess what? We want that hope and promise for them also. And so whenever we have the opportunity, when it is released unto us, we share about God's love. We share about his son, Jesus Christ. And how they have the opportunity of eternal life, a resurrection life, and that they do not have to go to a lake of fire, which is known as hell, but that they can go in heaven. And the third one I'd like for you to write down, for sickness, God has provided healing. He's already provided the healing. And as I said a few minutes earlier, our healing might not come on this side. All, all sickness and disease is not connected to sin. It is not. And sometimes when we're going through things, for those who do not have an understanding and a concept of that, uh, they could put upon you and ask you what you did. Oh, it must be sin. They going through, they must got some sin somewhere. Not necessarily. God wants to prove with some things we got to go through as a test. Some things we just got to go through. There are some times where the enemy will attack your body. But the main thing to know is that he's already provided healing. He has already provided. Let's go over and look at Psalms 103. Psalms 103. And as we read the scripture, what we're going to find, and I'm going to start at the first verse. And I'm going to continue reading until the fifth verse. In this passage of scripture, we're going to find all that God has already provided in this text. This is so, this is so beautiful and, and, and it's just so good. So I want you to really absorb this in. Beginning at the first verse, it says, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Now, verse 3 is going to take us into the provision, which are benefits. Who forgiveth all thine iniquities, and who healeth all thy diseases, which means that there is nothing exempt. It says, all thine iniquities. There is nothing too hard for God. What it takes from us is asking for forgiveness and turning away from it and not repeating it. And healeth all thy diseases. There is nothing that goes on in the body that he cannot heal. From the simplest headache, the common cold, to cancers. Listen, there are some things that hit the body that they don't even know the name of. They don't even know the cause of it. They're still experimenting and examining 
Every time somebody goes into the doctor with symptoms, guess what? They are still studying it to find out the cause and understanding the effects. But the word of God says healeth all thy diseases. That's what he has already provided in advance. So by the time we get to the medicine, guess what? I'm already healed. I just got to go through this particular process for the manifestation. But when I collectively and in unity receive within myself that I am already healed, because he said that he, he, he by his stripes, I, I am healed. He's already provided healing for me. I just have to wait for the manifestation. And in my waiting, there are times that the symptoms could get so bad, but I yet have to remind myself I'm healed. Even when it comes to forgiveness, I am forgiven. I am forgiven because I asked, and he's already provided forgiveness for me. Verse 4 says, who redeemeth thy life from destruction, who crowneth thee with loving kindness and tender mercies, who satisfieth thy mouth with good things so that thy youth is renewed like the eagle. He, he cares so much about us that he wants us renewed. He wants us renewed. We're covering tonight God's provision, taking a look at three areas. He has already provided forgiveness when it comes to sin, when it comes to death for those who are of his body. He has provided eternal and resurrection life. And when it comes to sickness and illness in the body, he has already provided healing. We just covered scriptures for Psalms 103, the first through the fifth verse. So take a look at that word and really connect with it and get it in your spirit. It's dealing with how God has given us these great benefits of forgiveness for all our iniquities. Once again, he has already provided. He's already provided healing for all our diseases. Now let's take a look over at Luke, the fourth chapter. Luke, the fourth chapter. And I believe I gave you the 18th verse, but I'm going to back it up to the 16th verse. So that's Luke 4 and 16. This is the reason why Jesus was sent. It says, and he came to Nazareth where he had been brought up. And as his custom was, he went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day and stood up for to read. And there was delivered unto him the book of the prophet Esaias, which is also known as Isaiah. And when he had opened the book, he found the place where it was written. The spirit of the Lord is upon me because he hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He hath sent me to heal the brokenhearted to preach deliverance to the captives and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised, to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. Jesus fulfilled the word of God. That was his purpose. God provided, we're talking about God's provision, and he provided where the, the animal sacrifice was temporary. He wanted to have something permanent. And so, just like with Isaiah, there was that question that said, who shall go for us? Who will I send? And Jesus is 
saying, I'll go. I'll go. So when I think about the word coming down in the likeness of flesh, you, you can you imagine just a, a, like a jar of words filling up in this body? It's just the word from head to toe, salvation, deliverance, healing, love, joy, peace, happiness, unity, the Holy Spirit, all of these words filled up in this body and it's walking upon earth. And that's why he came. He came for you and I to provide the things that we needed. So imagine just how much he loves us that long before we were thought of as he was formating the, the heavens and the earth and the spirit hovered upon that he was saying, I got to provide these things because I know that they're going to need them. They're going to need forgiveness. He knew in advance we were going to need some forgiveness in one way, shape, or form. Whether we realize it or not that, that we have crossed over or a trespassed or, or offended somebody, he knew in advance they're going to need forgiveness. And I want to provide it for them. He knew in advance that we were going to need healing whether it was in sickness or brokenness, because healing is not just in sickness when you're not feeling good in the body. Healing is when you're broken. We need to be healed and we need to be made whole. And so he provides that as well. Those things that have, have crushed many and where some are so damaged, he's saying that, guess what? I can heal you even in that. And so he thought about all of that in advance. And so when we go through troubles and trials and tribulations and we say we don't know what to do, guess what? He's reminding you, I've already provided an answer. I've already set it in motion. It's in my word. And he loved us enough to give us some instructions on how to release those benefits and those provisions in our lives. And so not only did he provide in advance, but he also released the keys to us, which are answers. It's instructions. That's all the key is. It's instruction on how to get forgiveness for that sin by asking, repenting, and turning away from it. Trusting and believing in him. Knowing that when you go and you ask in prayer that you believe at that very moment that it shall be done. We just have to wait for the manifestation of it. But the enemy is still going to come in with doubt. We all have to revert back to the word of God by saying he already provided the answer. I am waiting on it to show up. It's already mine. Healing is already mine. Deliverance is already mine. And when that time comes, when breath leaves our bodies, once again, if I am a part of the body, if I have accepted his son as my Lord and Savior, I have an opportunity for eternal and resurrection life. We're going to remain in Luke, but now I want to go over to the fifth chapter. And I'm going to start at the 17th verse. Luke 5 and 17. All right. It says, and it came to pass on a certain day, as he was teaching, that there were Pharisees and doctors of the law sitting by, which were come out of every town of Galilee and Judah and Jerusalem. Here's something that's so powerful. So if you have your Bible, I want you to underline this. It says, and the power of the Lord was present to heal them. He was there teaching. 
And look who is sitting by. We talked about this. The healing that you go through is for a testimony and a witness to your doctors and for those who've seen you go through with illness in the body. And, and like I said, it, it could be other areas that we need healing from. It could be depression, mental illness, all kinds of things. But look who is sitting by to witness what is about to take place. It says, and the power of the Lord was present to heal them. And behold, men brought in a bed, a man which was taken with a palsy. And they sought means to bring him in and to lay him before him. And when they could not find by what way they might bring him in because of the multitude, they went upon the housetop and led him down through the tiling with his couch into the midst before Jesus. Let me tell you something, that is some determination. That is some major determination that I don't care what we got to do. I got to get into the presence of the Lord because that is where I'm going to get what I need. And so it's, it, it's, it's crowded down here. I'm going to make a way. And thank God for the people that he was with. To even go that measure that they didn't say, you got to get there the best way you can. Listen, I brought you here. I tried to get you in. There's not enough room. I don't know what you're going to do now. No. They were determined as well. So not only uh, did they know that they had to get into the presence of the Lord, but that there is the gift of faith in operation. Verse 20 uh, says, and when he saw their faith, he said unto them, listen to me, man, thy sins are forgiven thee. Now this man was sick. But what did he address? He addressed sin. Because when he forgives us, guess what? He's looking at us in a place of being whole. Being whole just in case the sickness is because of sin. The main thing is to be forgiven. But he wants us whole in every area of our lives. He does not want us lacking or a deficit in short over here, but well balanced over here. No, he wants us whole. And that's why what he provided actually covers every area of our life. If you notice, the provision covers us as, as total. The sin, one day we will face death and sickness in the body. That's us. That's life. His main thing was, man, thy sins are forgiven. And the scribes and the Pharisees began to reason, saying, who is this which speaketh blasphemies? Who can forgive sins but God alone? But when Jesus perceived their thoughts, he answering said unto them, What reason ye in your hearts? Rather it, rather it is easier to say, Thy sins be forgiven thee, or to say, Rise up and walk. But that ye may know that the Son of Man hath power upon earth to forgive sins. He said unto the sick of the palsy, I say unto thee, arise and take up thy couch and go into thine house. So let me address your forgiveness first. Because I can heal you and you can continue in sin. And you can fall back into sickness. Which will result in spiritual death. But I want to address the thing that is going to release everlasting life unto you. That's where I want to get you to, to the everlasting life. So let me address the top first. You know, sometimes we want to address the middle of things before going to the root of things. Because if you don't address the root of a thing, it's still going to be sickness. Because the root isn't taken care of. Isn't that what a good God that we serve, that he loves us enough 
to get to the root of us. Verse 25 says, And immediately he rose up before them and took up that whereon he lay and departed to his own house, glorifying God. And they were all amazed, and they glorified God, and were filled with fear, saying, We have seen strange things today. Have you ever had that kind of encounter? That you know that you know that you know that what just happened, it transpired, it was strange, but you know that it was a miraculous healing, it was a miraculous deliverance, that one day you can see somebody who for years have been strung out on drugs, and the next time you see them, they are cleaned up, and you can't even tell that they even picked up any kind of alcohol or drugs. And you know that you know that you know that you know that a change has been made in their life. And then you say, you know what? <clears throat> That's strange because I just saw them a couple of months ago or uh, I just saw them and, and they were really going through. And, and you, but you know what? When you have that compassion and it kicks in and you begin to pray for a person, God honors those prayers. He honors those prayers. That's what these men were doing. Listen, they carried him in. They weren't selfish like the man who was sitting by the pool waiting for somebody to put him in. They stepped right over him. They stepped right over him. I don't want anybody in my life that's going to be selfish and leave me there. Pray me through. Pray for me. Present me. And see that's, that's, see, that's what we do as we intercede. We present an individual in the presence of God. We present them to God. That is what those men did who cut a hole in the tile. They presented him to Christ. That's what I need in my life. I want present me before Christ. Now I want to take a look over in James, the fifth chapter, as we're talking about God's provision. James, the fifth chapter, 14 through the 15th verse. And it reads as follows. Is any sick among you? Let him call for the elders of the church and let them pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer of faith shall save the sick and the Lord shall raise him up. And if he have committed sins, they shall be forgiven him. And so once again, when he heals us of our infirmities, he's also going to deal with the sin. Because I, I, we, we all have to get to this place. If you can heal me, I want to know more about you. If, if, if you can heal me, if I can call upon the name of the Lord, and this is where our faith is built, this is why it is used as a testimony and as an effective witness that you can say, you know what? I was sick. I didn't have any medicine. I didn't go to the doctor. But as I laid in the bed, I began to call on the name of Jesus and I asked him to remove that pain, remove this sickness. I asked him. And the more I call on his name, you know that thing began to lift up off of me. And I began to feel better. I knew that it was him alone. Listen, I couldn't call my mother. I couldn't call my father. I called on Jesus. And I'm here to testify about it. I'm here to be a witness about it. It's the same thing, like I said, going through deliverance for certain issues. When somebody can say, well, what program did you go through? Oh, I didn't go through a program. I called on Jesus. Right. 
How long did you have to stay in the program? I kept calling on Jesus. You mean to tell me you didn't relapse? Every time I got the urge, I called on Jesus. You see that how that could be in a witness for someone? A testimony for somebody? Even if it's a major debt and you don't know how to get out of it and man will tell you to go file bankruptcy and all these other things. But when you rely on Jesus and, and you begin to say, you know what, I need some instructions and some guidance on how to get out of this. And when you get out, when you get out from under that thing, and those who thought you were going to fall flat on your face, and they begin to ask you questions, because guess what? As a people, we just nosy. How you came out on top? And you ain't lose none of your stuff? How did that happen? And when you can boldly, and when I say boldly, I mean it confidently, say, I prayed. And I asked for guidance and, and directions. And when it was given unto me, I followed what was given unto me. And that's how I made it through. And you know why you have to give up anything? You know why I didn't lose not one thing? Because he's already provided an answer in advance. That is divine healing. That's what he does for us. He provides for us in advance. Jesus' earthly life exemplified his threefold ministry. And see how we have, we broke down the three things and Jesus had a threefold ministry which dealt with sin, death, and healing. Jesus' threefold ministry was teaching God's word preaching repentance preaching repentance covered the sin problem and the blessings of God's kingdom covered life and healing every kind of sickness disease and infirmity among the people so that's why Jesus came and it's still relevant today it has not lost its power. It has not lost its zeal. It has not lost its authority. And so we have access to it today. And so when you're going through, and the enemy tries to tell you, give up. You don't know what to do. Because guess what? In our carnality, we don't know what to do. If we step in the way, if we put our hands in it, we're going to mess it up. Listen, God has already provided an answer. Why not go ahead and tap into what he has to say? Because we can make a big mess out of some stuff. But just like he told the children of Israel over in Jeremiah 29 and 11, there is a reason why he said, I know the thoughts and plans that I have for you. They have been disobedient. They would not adhere he was going to forgive them. And so he sent them into captivity. And he was letting them know, listen, be encouraged in going into this captivity. Because I know the thoughts and plans I have for you for good and an expected end. I'm going to bring you out. But I need you to go this route in order for me to get you out. That's what that provision does. Let him provide. Let him provide. Our last scripture text for tonight is over in Matthew's, the fourth chapter. I pray that you're getting something out of this tonight. Matthew's, the fourth chapter, 23rd through the 24th verse. And it reads as follows. It says, And Jesus went about all Galilee, teaching in their synagogues and preaching the gospel of the kingdom, and healing all manner of sickness and all manner of disease among the people. 
And his fame went throughout all Syria, and they brought unto him all sick people that were taken with diverse diseases and torments, and those which were possessed with devils, and those which were lunatic, and those that had the palsy, and he healed them. His threefold purpose. Notice that what he did first was taught, because the word is a healing balm. The word instructs, yes, it corrects and it rebukes and it chastises us because he loves us. But the word that he taught was healing, it was word of forgiveness, and it was life. So he dealt with life in a whole. Forgiveness of sins. And then he dealt with the disease of the body. Amen? Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. I pray that you got something on tonight talking about God's provisions in three areas. For sin, he provides forgiveness. For death, he provides eternal and resurrection life. And for sickness, God provides healing. Amen? And as I mentioned, if the Lord's will, Apostle Wilson will return on next Wednesday to continue teaching on atonement and judgment. If there is anyone who desires prayer, amen, we're going to uh, pray with you. Praise the Lord. Whether you are online or here in the sanctuary, we're going to have prayer. Father, in the name of Jesus, we just come before you with thanksgiving and we honor your name tonight, Lord God. We thank you for providing all that we need in advance. Lord God, we ask you that you would forgive us, Lord God, of anything that's within us that does not please you. Father God, and that we will have the heart and the mind to turn from those things and not to follow them, Lord God, but that we will then go into a place of righteousness, Lord God. Oh, Lord God, we thank you for eternal and resurrection life in Jesus' name. And Father God, we thank you, Lord God, for providing healing, Lord God. You know what is going on in the lives of your people, Lord God. You know what we're all dealing with, Father God, in the name of Jesus. And I thank you. I thank you because you've already provided what we need. And, oh, Lord God, we accept what you provided tonight. And we say thank you, Lord God. We say thank you, Lord God, for what you've already done. And we rejoice, Lord God, as we're waiting on the manifestation of those things to come to pass. Lord God, I speak a blessing, Father God, over every household, Lord God, in the name of Jesus, for providing in advance. We thank you, Lord God, and whatever they need is going to show up, Lord God, on time. It'll never be late as we wait on you. In Jesus' name, amen.